Hello, welcome to Closer Look. My name is Gail Tatum. With me today are two people from our district, Lou Nyman, who is the Manager of Technology, and Dr. Betty Robinson, who is the Principal of Culp Elementary School. And we're here to talk about something very exciting that happened this spring, our first Science, Math, and Technology Day. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad you're with me today. I think it's important for all of us to get an understanding of why, why was this done? Why is this important? Betty, can you give a sense of why this is important to sure. the education of kids? Well, I think it's most important because we want, we want children to make connections. And um, Math, Science, Technology Day was a way for children to make connections, not just to the learning that occurs in school, but to learning that occurs outside of school. Okay. So you had this whole day planned. Mm -hmm. that, that looked at those three basic curricula areas, but also looked on how they integrated together. Yes, Is that and, right? and, and it was also an, an integration beyond the Mass Science Technology Days. It touched into li onto literature, okay. writing, okay. reflection, okay. having children really begin to bring some understanding mm -hmm. into processes and how things work. Okay, that's exciting. Lou, you were part of this <coughs> because you are our manager of technology and were able to bring that expertise to this. Yes, Is that um, right? I got a very nice opportunity from Betty Robinson when I started mm -hmm. the district to participate in this day. It was very exciting. Uh, one of the reasons I joined the t school district was to work with the children, which mm -hmm. that, that made it even more exciting. And it gave us the opportunity to show what computers and technology and how that integrates into curriculum and how it can be used to reinforce educational programs. Right. Now, my understanding is that it was a whole day and that you had stations and places set up throughout the school and that every child, every child in the school took part in this. Is that right? And Betty, if I remember correctly, this really came about through a couple of teachers that you have. Is that right? Yes. Um, the Merck Institute, of course, yes. runs a wonderful leader teacher program yes. in the summers. And last summer, two of our teachers had the opportunity to participate as actually adult learners. Huh. And I think that they were so excited about the things that were going on in the Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, one came back in uh, August. In fact, she met me at the door uh, mm -hmm. August 15th, the first day of school. <laughs> and she was really excited and enthusiastic and she wanted to do something different this year to bring some of what was going on with the Merck Science Program into the school. We've traditionally done a math night Yes. We've done a science night. A lot of our schools do that. Correct. Yes. And we, <clears throat> and she said, uh, those are wonderful, but children can't always come out at night. Parents aren't always able That's to true. bring every child to to those evenings. Also, we don't have the space because yeah. if you b bring a parent and a child, and sometimes two parents, That's we true. we you have, your school, there has to be a cutoff, yeah. right? Yeah. And and so we have to um, do a lottery system, mm -hmm. and, and children are left out of the process. So we thought, wouldn't it be a neat idea if we did it as a, a whole day activity? Uh -huh. And wouldn't it even be better if we did math, science, and technology? And I knew that we had a new science uh, technology coordinator in the district, yeah. and I wanted him to jump into this with both feet and kind of <laughs> get, him, get him wet into the process. And I thought, wow, we can yeah. call Lou. Yeah. So we made a call to Lou. And of course, Carol Stearns, Dr. Stearns, yes. has been working with us from the Merck Institute. And she was wonderful in coming in and saying, let's go for it. Yes, it's exciting. I've talked to Carol Stearns about the effort at Merck, and I know the Leader Teacher Institute has sparked many exciting things. And, but this is a very tangible piece that, mm -hmm. that we could all see, and you, you certainly saw it. I, I was, didn't have the pleasure to be there that day, but I heard a lot about it. It was a wonderful day. I, it sounds like it. It was wonderful. It started on a good note, didn't it? It started when you had a, a keynote speaker, a Dr. Metz from Penridge School District, who came and talked about... Uh, magic and science and I think we're going to take a few minutes and and listen to some of his words uh, uh, let's do that right now things that you're going to have to do for me um, you're going to be looking at science and magic now, those are two different things and I hope when you leave today you'll understand the difference a little bit better um, when you see something surprising there are several ways you can respond one way is like this huh. The other is, ah, uh, or, ah, uh, ah. Uh. All right, now, where'd that end? That, that was the magic. Now let's get to the science behind that. Magicians constantly distract your attention. They do things with flyers, they do things with things that go zap and zong and bombers. But there's all science behind that. You have to figure out where it is. 
what I had there was a powder that was very, very fine dust, almost like a uh, very fine grain uh, flour. Now you saw what that dust did, and that was in an open container. All right. Now let's put it in a closed container. <laughs> Is the paper wet? 
No, the paper's oh, not wet. If something is sticking together, it's not the ink, it's the glue that I put on the paper before you got here. It's a newspaper. It's a newspaper. I used a little rubber cement and a little bit of cornstarch on top so it wouldn't stick together. All right, it won't stick together that way. But when I cut it, I go through the paper and a little thin, tiny layer of rubber cement that's on there allows one paper to stick to another. So even though it looks like magic, there's science there. And she is longer than she is tall. Longer than she is tall. Would you please have <laughs> and then lay down. The distance from heels to the top of the head. Right? Would you cross your arms over your stomach that way? I can get this. Now I need to get this just so it's touching the top of your head. Is it touching the top? Okay. Now we're going to sit this right here. We're not going to move it. You have to stay just where you are. Now, in order for this to work, we have to perform a little bit of magic here, which is not really magic, but it's science, but we're going to call it magic. We need a good fairy to turn this person. Every good fairy has. I'm also going to give the good fairy a very small sample of shrink dust. Don't get anything of this. Don't get any of this on you. I, I swear, <laughs> you can start in a Wizard of Oz after you're done here. Now, what you need to do is just toss this, and when you do, I want everybody to yell, shrink. All right, now you're going to toss this over here. We're trying to make her shrink. One, two, three, shrink! All right, let's see if it works. It did touch your head before, and now, let's see how many things are going to be on there. Okay. We can now get two fingers between the stick and the top of the head. The shrink dust actually works. Excellent job. Thank you. Good fairy. That you remember, there's a big difference between science and magic. Science, you investigate. The magicians use sleight of hand and distraction. They don't want you to investigate, but they're using a bunch of science tricks. Don't let them fool you. I would like to thank all my volunteers this morning. Could you give them a hand? That was really fun to watch. I, you were there and could see the impact of the kids on, on this. What, what was his message? He was great, first of all. <laughs> I, I think the for all of us, we were so enthralled yeah. that we couldn't tear ourselves away. Um, he really wanted children to understand that science and magic are interrelated. Right. And he continuously asked the question, is it science or is it magic? Is it magic? And they could see that most of the magic really was science in the end. There's always a principle of science yeah, at play. Behind everything. Mm -hmm. he, he's engaging in what he did. He, he forced a lot of thinking, which was very, very interesting. I. I stayed as long as I could before I had to teach my <laughs> session, right. and it was really, really interesting, and the kids really enjoyed they it. They really loved it. So this started your day. So all the kids were in there listening to this man and getting a sense of this this excitement, and that, that was the key to your day, wasn't it, in the beginning to your day? So that, it was really perfect. That was the kickoff. And, that um, was the kickoff. I, I would like <laughs> to say that one of the uh, offshoots of all of this was to be able to work in collaboration with another district. Yeah, that's nice, Dr. Metz it? comes from Penridge and they were kind enough to allow him to come in and do the workshop for us. But it did start the day. I think it set the tone. Yes. You, you may have noticed in the clip that the students were writing because yes. a part of the entire day was for children to be reflective and to put their thoughts in their journal mm -hmm. that they had to carry with them 
to every session. So, so they really had a record of this day and what Absolutely. it meant and what they observed as they went through it. Right. I want to take a minute now. We're going to look at some more footage. And uh, I'd like, Betty, if you'll look at this with us, since you were probably the one who saw the most, although you probably didn't see it all, because I know you were involved in teaching some of the sections yourself. But we're going to look right. at some of these, and maybe you can explain uh, for all of us what you're seeing and what's happening, because it won't always be clear. And at least it'll sure. give everybody a, a sense of what the day was like. So let's take a look at that right now. Sure. Uh, Donna Brown is our science supervisor and she's working with sand, uh, rubber sand with water, uh -huh. showing children how when they pour it into different containers it makes different shapes. Huh. Kind of like what you see at the carnival when yes. children make those sand castles. There she is. And they really enjoyed that. She's working with a younger group of students here. Of course Dave Decker, our our, I'm sorry, our mathematics supervisor, was working with some blocks and patterns and showing children some of the uh, principles that go with that, with making the different patterns. Uh -huh. They're having fun. <laughs> A lot of it, as you can see, was, ha was hands-on, yeah. getting children actively involved in the learning, which is one of the best ways to help children right. understand learn what and understand and retain. Right. So you can see, He's yeah. counting. you can see their interest was high. Uh -huh. Jim Lukens is one of our favorites. He's helped us out at uh, Science Night before, and this is an activity he does with the liquid nitrogen that I am always uh, fascinated uh, to see it, it always. And in this one, um, I think that was the balloon he used to show students what happens when it goes into the container and comes back out and, and the air hits it. Yeah. And, and as a part of this one, there were some tasty marshmallows that he passed <laughs> around that he served that were in the frozen, in the nitrogen. They seem eager. Yeah. That was neat for the kids to watch their faces as they tried to bite into this marshmallow. <laughs> uh, Brad Carroll, who is our gym teacher, was doing something that probably those of us who are always thinking about dieting would like <laughs> to be able to do, exchange those fat grams. <laughs> he was, he was um, involving the students in an activity where they're actually throwing different sized fat grams around, <laughs> the molecules around, and then taking their uh, heart pulse uh -huh. and then exchanging to see how did that work. Right. I believe this gentleman is Mr. Bicycle and he came in, he's a local um, um, businessman and he uh -huh. came in to show the students not just the, the physics of, of a bike but also to talk to them about bicycle safety uh -huh. because that's always something that um, is ever present at the elementary level. Sure. So as you can see we tried to bring the practical with the theoretical. That's nice. So it was a, a very nice blend. Because yeah. why are they important? Because we're doing safety things now. Go ahead. Like right, and, ex and expressing the importance of wearing a helmet. Yeah. And, we get in exactly the same and, and along with uh, health and, and, and uh, science and medicine goes a Heimlich maneuver, which we have two participants demonstrating for our students. That's never something that um, will be out of date. We always need to know how to do that. <laughs> and this is our star lab, yes. which uh, was on loan from Merck Institute. I've seen that at some of the science nights. I know yes. inside the students see a whole sky, yes. don't they? It doesn't it's look that way from the outside. It's wonderful. And uh, here's a way in which we integrated art mm -hmm. into the science, uh, technology, math day. Because if you look at it, there's symmetry involved, which yes. is a math concept, and getting children to also uh, work with the art and the patterns and yeah. knowing that if you do it on one side it should be on the other side. Those students are working in their journals that I mentioned yeah, to you before. Yeah, record keeping that you have. Always record keeping and also doing some research. Exactly. Actually uh, reflecting on some information that they learned, uh, perhaps researching some topics, some questions. I, I think one of the other neat things was having parents involved. Yes. I and, recognize and, that woman as one of your volunteers. Yes, yeah, she's yeah. a parent who's actively involved in Barbara Hood, and she taught a lesson. So it was neat to have the community and the parents and everybody working together. And, and I believe this looks like Joan Hurd. This is a glance down the hall, isn't it, to see what's going on in all these classrooms during the day. And, it, and it's easy to see that in every session, children are up and about, involved in the, in the 
learning, active, a lot of active right. participation. That was a wonderful day. Yeah. It really it was, was exciting. a wonderful day. It was truly exciting. It was. Probably exceeded our expectations. We could do it again. Is this the sort of thing that you would do annually? Absolutely. Oh, I, I, I would <laughs> love to see us do more of that. Uh, yeah. I would like to see us do more of it collectively with a, a, a number of schools and, and get this out to as many children as we can. Yeah, it certainly would be a nice goal to have a day like this where the kids are all excited about science all day. Now, Lou, let's take a second and talk about you and, and the computer part of it. Now, I know that you were involved with helping to organize and helping to set up and the mechanics of setting up computer lab space, but, but clearly much more was involved in that. Uh, the logistics were a small part of it. Uh, the big part, which I was really excited mm -hmm. about, was actually being with the children, selecting software that enhanced the, the learning that they were doing, the subjects that they were learning about, and, and using that to reinforce those ideas. And it was a great deal of fun. Uh, the children loved the chance of being with the equipment and working with that stuff. Uh, a lot of questions. Uh, we even did a small pop quiz in one of the, the sessions. It was, it was a great time. The kids really, really enjoyed it. You told me that, I know we're going we're gonna to look at some footage in a second that will show some of the software that was used and some of the activities that happened, but it touched on geography and there was one that had to do with graphics, I think you were explaining, yeah, uh, or graphing. David Decker did some things with Tabletop, which, which was from okay. the Merck Institute effort, and that actually did graphic simulations of uh, real life phenomena, okay. and David did a lot with that. We did things with ecosystems. Ecosystems, Ge that's geography. the one. The ecosystems was the oceanic uh, yes. program. And this, th this link to curricular oh, yes, issues the, that the kids are studying. The ecosystem was tied directly to, they had been learning about food mm -hmm. systems, which was really, really interesting. Hmm. Uh, and uh, seeing how that's some of my background, my college background, that was a lot of fun to teach that as well. So it was great. So really was the best way to see how technology really can enhance learning, oh. if we can use it that way. Oh, it really enlightened me even more than I thought. Thought. That's great. Well, let's take a second and we'll look at some footage of that and see what it looks like. Maybe you can explain it to us. Okay. Uh, here's myself. We're uh, in the geography session. I believe this is the sixth grade. And uh, the gentleman who was with me, was one of the teachers, helped out a great deal. And we also had a lot of help from community members in the, in the, in the labs. But one of the things that was very interesting was that they felt this was so reinforcing to the geography lessons that were taking place, and it really gave them a real perspective on what was taking place. And the, the intensity and, and the, uh, I don't know what you want to say, persistence that everyone had trying to get the tasks done was the, really interesting. The kids really look interested there. They're, they have, look at her face, she's just figuring something out here. There important. were so many uh, <laughs> different sessions, uh, I believe, I can't remember exactly what this one was about. Uh, I think the, the prime example from this is just they were so intense about learning what they were learning. And yeah, the computers it. reinforced it so greatly. And they had so much fun using those uh, and learning about the things they've already learned about. I think it was it was a great session. All the sessions were really good. Now, would the, would the students have about a half hour, 45 minutes? Or it was about, about 40 minutes each session. Okay. What we tried to do was an introduction, and we actually did the hands-on laboratory, and they were all taking notes and scoring things and, and doing different things within the sessions. And then we had five uh, minutes after that to reflect on everything, fill out the journals, and ask additional questions. And it was it was a joy to work with the kids. I, I, I was very, very happy that I had gotten involved. Those little guys are really excited. Oh. Look at that. Okay. Uh, this was uh, a, a science session where you actually could make movies and create weather and do different things. And it, that was a big thing with the uh, younger kids. They really liked learning how you can make different weather scenarios, and, and that was a lot of fun for them. Uh, I think what amazed me most was the amount of questions and the interest that, that evoked. It was, it was a great time. Um, I had questions I really didn't expect, and uh, a lot of interest was, was given, and it showed to me that this is why I'm really here. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, you can see it if you watch the children's faces. I think one of the other neat things, you watch children working together. There was such cooperation Perfect. among the, the students, among the staff, among the community, among administration, the central office. Every, it was really a collaborative effort, and, and it shows. And I, I, to reinforce what Betty just said, we tried to emphasize a lot that uh, research and technology and science is not done in a vacuum, it's done as a group. Mm -hmm. Well, it really was something. I can see that it was, it was a really important part of the day, too. Yes. This is really something. I, I'm learning a lot just watching all this and seeing it all happen. 
Um, the last part, or there's two other parts I really want to concentrate on. One is that uh, I'm sure you heard a lot from teachers and students during the day uh, that this was an exciting thing. Can you give me any sense of what the teachers had to say? And did they feel a part of this, other than the two who initially came to you and brought forward the idea? Absolutely. Uh, we formed a committee, mm -hmm. and we kind of twisted the arms in the beginning of, of certain uh -huh. people that we knew we needed <laughs> on the committee. But I think if you were to look at the list of people who participated, again, mm -hmm. it cut across all the curricular areas. Our parents were on the committee. We had community nice. people. We had central office staff on the committee. We had Merck Institute people on the committee. So as yep. I said, it totally exceeded our expectations. So it, really was it, a, it kind of grew yeah. as each committee meeting. It be a little more things, right. a few more things to add to right. it. Well, that's all right. But it was that's wonderful good. because, again, it was such a collaborative effort. Yeah. And it was, it was a way for children to see that there is cooperation does mm -hmm. pay off. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, I think we learned a lot. I yeah. think we yeah. took the took the role of adult learners. Yeah. Yes, I, I, it showed a lot to me uh, with the technology and other things within classrooms. But I guess one of the comments I wanted to make, both from community members who helped us and from teachers who also participated, there was not a person who wasn't willing to say, "Let's do it all over again." Yeah, that's I mean, good. it was that exciting. That's you you could probably term this whole venture. Uh, it was a community of learners. Huh. I that's think lovely. Everyone, everyone gained from the experience. Everyone was a learner in the experience. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Let's take a second and we'll look at, uh, listen to some of the comments from our teachers and see what they have to say. It really allows kids to have a chance to concentrate on the two. We, we tend to try to do everything in uh, every, every single day in elementary school with a little social studies, a little reading, a little math, a little science. And so it's nice to have a day when kids can move through the day in a very concentrated, in-depth fashion and uh, see math, science, and technology working together. The science and technology, one of the things that um, uh, is helpful is to see some of our roots. And by far the oldest of all the sciences is the astronomy. And so you can get a, a feeling of uh, where we've come from with the astronomy and developing through. And, and of course, uh, we're in a very rapidly changing world now with the science and the technology, and so that hopefully a day like this will not only lead us from the roots, but into the, the future and give the kids a little inspiration. My favorite thing that I did was science. One of the things that impressed me the most was that I had quite a few children say to me it was fun, and I feel that if we can start having the children feel that science and math and technology is a fun activity, then I feel that we're definitely going in the right direction. One of the people in the community came and his wife came to him. We learned how to do um, the Heimlich maneuver on, on young people and on infants. This guy came in my class and um, he gave us coffee filters and, um, and then we got to um, make, put one marker on um, the coffee filter and then um, put the end, of, then fold it up and then put the end of it into water and then it would turn into different colors. Um, the keynote speaker, he was the assembly. Mm -hmm. Um, he showed us um, magic and all the normal magic tricks and he would do them in magic and then he would show the science behind the magic. The hands-on inquiry-based science that we were trying to promote that day um, gives students an opportunity to ask questions and to follow the scientific method that scientists have been using for years and that science is more than just reading facts out of a book and that they can learn by asking themselves questions, asking each other questions, and experimenting, and actually doing things with their hands. And there are a wide variety of scientists that, that do, do this every day in their, in their employment. OK, I think that's about the end of our discussion. I want to thank you both for joining me today. It was really very interesting. I think you've said it just right. It was a community of learners. And I think that's the message we want to leave everybody with. That's that's really a lovely thought. So thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for being the woman who piloted this for <laughs> us all, because that takes a special initiative, too. And that's nice. And Lou, thank you for all you've done to help us and helping us get launched a little bit further along in technology. We need to do that so, well, so badly. Yeah, it's fun. As we leave the show today, I'd like to invite all of you to just watch the faces of these children as we 
as the credits are scrolled and you can see in their faces how excited they are. We thank you for joining us. My name is Gail Tatum for North Penn Television. Thanks a lot. blob. I got it. Got it in my hand. That's weird. That is weird. That is weird. Now you may touch it. goals for our kids because succeeding in the real world isn't easy help the effort to raise standards in america's public schools call 1-800-96-PROMISE <laughs> 